down that road, Farmington Avenue, it's downtown Hartford, Connecticut. And this is not a random land episode. This is something else. It's the Sometimes Vlog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. It's been a long time since I have sang that little tune, that little ditty at the beginning of a vlog, which I'm not used to making vlogs, but I used to do them all the time in between Random Land episodes, and that is what's happening now. We are in Connecticut. We are here in Hartford, Connecticut. On our East Coast New England trip, we saw some fall foliage yesterday. We have filmed a lot of things which are still being edited. We're moving around, we're filming every day, we're doing all kinds of stuff, and we're very excited about it. Now, before I say anything else, I gotta tell you, I will be home next, or this upcoming weekend, October 15th and 16th, for a meetup event we're having. You can find the details at Haunted Orange County, hauntedoc.com. Uh, very excited about that when I go back to Southern California. So that's still on. We only have a couple of days left here in New England, and then we are flying back to the West Coast. Our arms are gonna be very tired, but very exciting stuff. We'll be back for all the Halloween festivities and such like and whatnot. So we've got haunted stuff out here in New England. We've got beautiful fall foliage coming at you. And today, I that was all for Allie. So it's Allie's dream trip to the East Coast. Maybe I should explain a little bit about what we're doing before I show you something I want to show you that is right in front of me that I'm looking at that is blowing my mind. So if I seem a little flustered, I am, and forgive me for the shakiness, for the, any wind noise that happens. I didn't have time to build this vlog to scale or to paint it. It's just an off the cuff thing, using a cell phone. Nobody knows you're in here but me. So this is a little secret conversation just between us. Anyway, we're out here because of course, Allie has had all these surgeries, she had all these health problems, and COVID and that happening back to back, delayed us having a wedding, delayed us having a honeymoon. So poor Allie's had all these surgeries. She's had all the tricks and none of the treats, right? And so I wanted to, even though it only, but we only had a week to pull this off and I made a lot of wooden signs to sell them to pay for at least part of the trip. I wanted to take her somewhere beautiful where there's a little bit of fall color and there's not much fall color in Hartford right now, but we went up to New Hampshire, we went up to Vermont. You guys will see all of that in the coming days. So I wanted to be just to, just to take her, she survived two major surgeries this year, just to take her somewhere pretty, somewhere fall themed so she could get her fill of New England, a place she's always wanted to go. And basically it would have been our honeymoon. We would have had two or three weeks instead of, you know, just a few days running around and filming and doing everything else, but better than nothing. Okay. So today we've been running, we've been, we've been filming, we've been doing all this stuff. We're getting pretty worn out, pretty tired. And today I was like, oh no, it's going to be another big filming day because today was finally something for me. Someplace I have always wanted to come to my entire life. Not some New England farm or foliage. That's all great. Not a haunted attraction, nothing like that. Not a historical place like Salem, Massachusetts, where we just filmed someplace else that I have been a fanboy of my whole life, someplace I have always wanted to see, a place that's literally on my bucket list of things. I got to see that before I die. And I got here this morning and walked in and there's absolutely no photography even allowed, no video allowed and no cell phones allowed. So that was the bad news. No random land from this time. Now, maybe in the future, maybe with permission, maybe with a little letter writing campaign, something like that. Um, but for this first visit, no main video, no random land content. But in a way, that's a weird blessing because this is a place that's so flabbergasted me. I didn't have to go on a tour of this place and think, what am I gonna film? Versus like trying to absorb it, trying to listen, all that kind of stuff, trying to film around someone talking. So it kind of worked out to be a blessing in a way. And I have just walked out of this place. Today was my very first time at a bucket list dream location for me to visit. Behold, my friends, that right there up on that hill, up on that prominence, up on that beautiful little knoll is Mark Twain's house. Or I should say it's not Mark Twain's house. This house right here is the Samuel and Olivia Clemens house. Now, of course, Mark Twain's real name, Samuel Langhorn Clemens. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, we've gone on a lot of Mark Twain adventures together. In fact, this summer we were at Mark Twain's birthplace. We were at his boyhood home in Hannibal, Missouri, where the books Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn are partially set in that town of Hannibal, Missouri. So we've been to his birthplace. We've been out west to the town where he first became Mark Twain, the first house he was ever in when he wrote Mark Twain down on a letter to a newspaper out there in Nevada, all these kinds of adventures. I've been to abandoned mining camps where Mark Twain has been. I've even been to the hotel he stayed at in Paris when he went to Paris. I have followed Mark Twain's life and career my whole life. Uh, pretty much since fifth or sixth grade, 
when Mrs. Laird, Mrs. Sandria Laird, who is sadly deceased now, uh, had us do a Huck Finn play. I really fell in love with Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. Uh, we did a Tom Sawyer play, excuse me, and I played Huck Finn in the play. She gave me the finest compliment any teacher ever gave me. She goes, Huck, you were believable. And let me keep the book, Tom Sawyer, completely changed my life. One good teacher can completely change uh, your life, for sure. And that was Mrs. Laird for me. She gave, I'm gonna get emotional here, so I'm, try, I'm trying not to let my eyes get sweaty with respect, not just for the Sam Clemens story, but also for the Mrs. Laird story. But anyway, she gave me the book, I still have it, to this day, and that started a lifelong love of Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn books. And then when I was a little older, I started reading his first book, Innocence Abroad, the one that made his fortune and made his fame. It is a very funny book. It's the first book I ever read where I laughed out loud. Then Roughing It about his time in the West. I've read so many biographies of Mark Twain. Uh, my bookshelf is full of Mark Twain books, his, his letters, biographies, everything he's ever written. I mean, I've been a big fan for a long time. Let's put it that way. And I have followed his life in mining camps and across the desert and up and down the Mississippi River in so many different ways, even in places in Europe, like I was saying, that the one place I'd never been to that you think I would have gone to is the Mark Twain House and Museum here in Hartford, Connecticut, because this was his golden age. This is when he had first made his fame and fortune. He had first got his little bit of money. He had married his wife who came from old New England money here, and he had been tamed and become Mr. Clemens. So he was no longer Sam. Now he was Mr. Clemens. He had a Mrs. Clemens. She came from sort of coal money, which would be like having oil money today. And uh, he came here and like I said, got tamed down, became a proper New England gentleman, or he was supposed to. And how did he get all that old Western Mississippi River energy out of him? By going up here and being Mark Twain up in the study and writing that down and putting that all into his books. And so this is the classic time period when all the books were written. This is the classic time period where he lived with his wife and they had three beautiful daughters here, Susie, Jean, and Clara. And so they had a family plays here. They lived next to Harriet Beecher Stowe. That's her house over there. She wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, this was the publishing capital of America back then. You're very close to New York City. They were part of high society. It's a whole thing. It's the a, it's a whole golden age of his life. Now, after moving away from here, tragedy would befall them. At the very end of living in this house, Mark Twain was bankrupt. He had to go on a world tour, a lecture tour, you know, do live performances basically to pay off his debts. And uh, his daughter was still in the United States. She was at college and she came down to Hartford to visit friends who were staying in this house. And she actually passed away in this house, um, kind of losing her mind with the meningitis and everything and kind of getting delirious and all that stuff. And Mark Twain came here when he heard she was sick. But by the time he got here, she had passed away and he had to bury his daughter and his wife and, and his, the rest of his family were overseas in Europe. It was a horrible, tragic thing. And he wrote letters. He wrote a letter to his wife from here about what it was like to be in their empty house. I mean, the former palace of their happiness, now just a monument to their, to their great sadness. They could never stand to live in the house again. Even when he made his fortune back, they did not live in the house again. But many of the pieces, so the house was turned into apartments later for a little bit. And eventually, obviously someone bought it and said, no, this is valuable. And to save it from demolition, turned it into a museum. Over the years, they've collected many Clemens artifacts are back in the house. Um, but there it is, the Mark Twain house. Now, like I said, they call it the Mark Twain house, but it's really the Mr. Clemens house in my mind because it's that time period of his and so much joy and so much sorrow are associated with this house and with the whole life story of Mr. Mark Twain, which is fascinating. I highly recommend um, Ron Powers's autobiography of Mark Twain. Just look up Mark Twain, Ron Powers, you'll find it. And I can't believe this. Coming in from the parking lot, coming up the steps, you come behind the house and I walk out here in front and it just blew my mind. My mind was blown. I mean, that's Mark Twain's freaking front door right there. This is where the carriages would have come up. The driveways are obliterated now. You can't see the driveways, but you would have come up in a carriage parked under here. That's Mark Twain's carriage house where his servants live with their 10 children and all this kind of stuff. Or eight kids. I think it was eight kids. I'm flabbergasted. I'm flustered right now. All my facts are jumbled. My brain is soup but look at this i got to walk up inside of mark twain's house so you have to go on a guided tour like i said no cell phones allowed no pictures allowed inside the house but you can walk the grounds you can take pictures outside of the grounds look at this mark twain stepped here these are mark twain's front steps and that is mark twain's front door look at you're touching samuel langhorn clemens's and olivia clemens this is mind-blowing. That's Mark Twain's freaking front door. Little Mark Twain used to walk 
into this house. This is the porch that goes along the house. I think they call this an umbra, an umbra, umbra, something, the big uh, covered porch at the back here. There's a famous picture of him sitting with his daughters and his wife um, right here, right on this step here, looking out over where you used to be able to see the river. And that's part of why he liked this house, right? You can see down this hill to a river there and his writing room was facing that direction, facing out towards the west, towards the scenes of his great adventures. And uh, there's a famous picture of him sitting right let me see, kind of right here where you'd have this lined up in the back and it sort of zoomed in so it brings that a little closer and Mark Twain's sitting right there. So of course I just had my picture taken. Now that Allie is here. She um, was a little tired from walking through the house so she went down to uh, go get drinks and stuff from the car and left me with you guys. But this is the back of Mark Twain's house right here. There's that covered porch where he had so many, you know, tender moments of his life. Ah! Tender moments of his life with his family right there oh my mouth is dry i need a drink over here and look at this tower look at the tower the third floor where there was one guest bedroom the butler's bedroom and mark twain's billiard room well we're gonna go sneak around the side of the house and check out this like uh, solarium here this little this little indoor outdoor garden look at the glass roof on it it's beautiful. In there is their main living room with the mantelpiece and all the little bric-a-brac on the mantel. He would have to tell his daughters a story about it, starting with one item and moving through the items. The stories could never be the same, but the objects were always the same. Now up there, this tower here. Hold on, I can't see what you can see right now. Hold on, let me flip around. Up here in this tower here, this is the porch off of Mark Twain's study slash billiard room up there. He had a writing desk there. He had a second writing desk in the corner so that he wouldn't be distracted probably by the billiard table, or there are 18 cats that they had here, or three dogs. Look at that. You know, I know, and don't know. I think we're the name of the dogs. And we're gonna sneak around the side of Mark Twain's house right now for a little sometimes vlog action. I should tell you while I'm doing this here, while I'm relocating, um, the meetup event is uh, pretty cool. It's sponsored by Haunted Orange County. It's gonna be at the Heritage Museum of Orange County, an old timey haunted location. And the Heritage Museum of Orange County, uh, it benefits them and in order to have a meetup where the last time we had a meetup that was free, we had, uh, we had uh, people lined up outside in the sun. It was super hot, it was like 100 degrees. Okay, there it is right there. And there, up there are two little windows. Those are the windows to Mark Twain's billiard room. I'm gonna go down the hill because it'd be easier to see. Um, we had people lined up for two hours just to meet me and take a picture. And they were in the sun. It was so hot. We had to go and buy water. We we're trying to give water to people. And um, it ended up that they had to turn the line and put it by a dumpster out there. So everyone was smelling the dumpster and everyone was so brave. And a couple people had to leave because uh, it was just too hot to handle and all this stuff. And there was a lot of people that couldn't make that event. So we wanted to do another event in Haunted Orange County. Decided to partner with the museum and uh, partially as a benefit to them and partially to do tickets as a way to spread everybody out so everyone has a time slot and there's no two hour lines. There we go, there's the house there. I'm gonna walk a little farther. Um, they have a ticketing system. So it's $10 per adult. Kids 13 and under are free. And um, the $10 gets you a free poster, uh, one of two. So you have your choice of a free poster and a time slot. And it benefits the Heritage Museum of Orange County, preserving a little history down there. And we get to take a sick pic uh, during the time slot in a house that's normally closed off. It's like a historical village, a couple of historic houses there. And it's normally closed off. It's like haunted. They dragged it out of a cemetery, actually. The house used to be surrounded by a cemetery. So there's a whole like little Halloween connection. It's gonna be decorated, gonna be a cool Halloween uh, picture. And there are still, they added more. So there are still tickets available. And uh, that is October 15th and 16th. So Saturday and Sunday in Orange County is down in Santa Ana. There's plenty of parking, everything's cool. Um, we're going to make sure one way or another we bring water and drinks and snacks of some kind down there. Um, we're hoping a food truck will come, but I haven't got confirmation about that yet. And, uh, and you know, we'll put a screen outside with old movies and that way people can come and you guys can meet each other and it'll be great. There'll be the rat, there'll be Allie will be down there. I think fake Tyler will be down there most of the time. Hopefully George and all my friends. Um, so plenty of people to meet and talk to and hang out with. Check this out. Okay, forget all that now. Now look at this. This is incredible. So right up there is the, the porch off of Mark Twain's writing room, basically his writing room, really his billiard procrastinating room. And uh, here's the little windows right here. 
that would lead into there. I mean, this is incredible. It's a huge house. I mean, at least 10,000 square feet. It must be in there. Absolutely massive. But you got to remember, two thirds of the house was dedicated to big old kitchens and cellars and um, servants quarters because you had governesses and butlers and you had the carriage house with your driver back then and all this stuff. All the things that we've now replaced with washing machines, a microwave, uh, you don't need all that room. You know, you don't need a separate room for coal anymore or anything like that. So nowadays you wouldn't even need that much space. So the actual family square footage in there might be two or 3,000 square feet, like a nice moderately sized uh, middle-class home today. Uh, and the rest of the space taken up by servants are grand drawing rooms and things that we typically really don't need in America these days. I, I've, I've never been to someone's house and been invited into the grand drawing room or the ladies sitting room. It's definitely a product of the Victorian age. That is for sure. And like I said, this was Mark Twain's sort of golden age. They were patrons of the arts. They put a young uh, African American man through college who later um, became the mentor to Thurgood Marshall. Uh, I know Mark Twain sponsored a lot of stuff for Helen Keller uh, when he was in this house and had his money and stuff like that. So lots of good deeds done from the home. And of course, some of the world's greatest literature flowed from Mark Twain's pen while he was living here. Another place I went to this summer was Mark Twain's grave. So 2022 ended up completely, this is unexpected. We made the decision to come here less than 24 hours ago. Uh, and this other location was unexpected. This summer I had the unexpected chance right before my van blew up and the transmission broke and I went heavily into debt, which I'm still in, but that's nobody's fault but mine and a completely separate story. Um, right before that, I got a chance to visit Mark Twain's grave in Elmira, New York. And uh, so there's a couple of Mark Twain locations I've never been to now. There's a couple left, but this is obviously the major one, the major Mark Twain spot that I had never been now that I've been to his grave um, this summer. But that was in Elmira, New York. Elmira, New York also had at Elmira College that little gazebo. You may have seen the episode. Uh, if not, go back and check it out. Uh, we didn't get to go in the gazebo, but it's so small you could just see through the windows. You could, you could basically spit on it and make a rainstorm, as my grandma used to say. Um, it's so small. That used to be located at a farm in Elmira, New York called Quarry Farm. And that was Olivia Langdon, Mark Twain's wife. It was her sister's, Susan Crane, that was her name, mar married name. Um, farm there in Elmira, New York, and they used to go out that, and it also overlooked a river, and they built him a little gazebo up on the hill where he wrote giant chunks of Huck Finn and all those different classic books, um, but theoretically, he was also working on them in this house as well, so a major piece of world literary history, and then, of course, aside from all of that, personally, just a big deal to me, like I said, from the fifth grade uh, till now, I have been an avid consumer of Mark Twain's work. And really, I would think, I've always been interested in history, castles and knights and all that kind of stuff. Um, but really, I think what really got me into American history, and I would never have the job or the gig or the thing that I've done today or all the adventures or all the happy people who love Random Land and who have told me that, you know, it, was, it got them through the pandemic or it, it helped them with this or that or the other thing. I would have never had my passion for sort of history and American history and travel and all those things. Maybe I wouldn't have had that without Mark Twain because it was loving Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer that kind of drew me into reading the other Mark Twain books as I got older. Life on the Mississippi, great book. Innocence Abroad, great book. Roughing It. And those made me start to read probably the first biography of a person that I ever read that I didn't have to read for school, right? Or like Abraham Lincoln or someone like that was Mark Twain. And then I became a crazy consumer of Mark Twain biographies, and then, you know, it's Mark Twain's out in Aurora, Nevada. So, or he's out on the Comstock load being a silver miner. And then I go, well, I want to know all about that. I want to know all about the cities he was in. I want to know all about what was silver mining like back then. And that led me into a whole getting into old West history. Cause when I was a kid, I think in the eighties and then into the nineties, other than dances with wolves and tombstone, Westerns weren't all that popular. I didn't grow up, you know, with Butch Cassidy and the Lone Ranger and all that kind of stuff. It was Mark Twain that got me into the old West. And then, of course, we've had all these Old West adventures. It's Mark Twain that inspired me and made me love the Mississippi River Valley. And, of course, I've traveled all over that and learned all kinds of stuff. And so, I mean, my life has been, uh, in a weird way, like kind of a mirror of Mark Twain's. I didn't find the thing, I didn't find my voice or the thing I was good at until I was 30 years old, you know. Uh, before that, I did my wandering years in a band and all that kind of stuff. So there's weird parallels that I didn't, I didn't construct on purpose. Uh, I didn't find my thing until I was in my 30s. Mark Twain 
didn't write his books until he was in his 30s. He was out there and wandering around, going from job to job kind of a thing too. And uh, then met his wife when he was about, oh, I don't know, he was like 30. Oh, I'm gonna get, oh, this is embarrassing that I'm gonna get this wrong, but I'm all flustered with dates and names of backs right now. But he was about 30, somewhere between 31 and 33. And he met his wife who was only about 19. So he ended up falling in love with a, a younger lady and getting married and all that stuff. And that's what led to his ultimate happiness. I didn't meet the love of my life until I was in my 30s, that kind of thing. So in a way I've always been inspired by Mark Twain, even uh, on another level as I got older, which is like, oh, it's never too late. It's never too late, you know, and, uh, then he lost an entire for his entire author fortune, basically, and remade it all. By the time he died, he was a millionaire again. He rebuilt his entire life from scratch over again, even after going through all these tragedies um, as a much older guy. And so he's always kind of inspired me as a writer and a creative and all that kind of stuff. And as a person who evolved, that's the thing about Mark Twain, because maybe many of you aren't familiar with Mark Twain. Maybe some of you haven't watched all my other videos where I've given this context before. But um, <clears throat> because of some of the language in Mark Twain's books, some of the antiquated language, people go, oh, wasn't Mark Twain some kind of a, a, an ist or something like that? No, 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 no. Mark Twain started life. This is one of the things that's always inspired me about him. He started as the son of a slave owner in a little Missouri backwoods town. Started as an ignorant sort of Huck Finnish boy himself who then later made contact with the wider world and as he did so, evolved and changed and then ended up writing, uh, at that point, the greatest anti-slavery anti novel of all time, maybe, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, or Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, there's no the on the beginning of that book, actually. But, uh, so, an, an evolved person, you know. We don't leave a lot of room for people to evolve today. It's kind of something wrong today, is that you have to have mercy and forgiveness and give people room to grow and change, you know, uh, because some of the greatest people in history of any color, creed, nationality are people who maybe started life on the back foot or didn't start out as great people and became great by overcoming their ignorance or their uh, circumstances in life. And uh, that is what makes something inspiring, right? If you were born perfect and never did anything wrong and had an easy time of it and you were just a little angel your whole entire life it wouldn't be an exactly inspiring story to the rest of us who are made of this crude matter you know what i mean and so that is uh, another thing that inspires us so i could go on and on about different things and different facets of mark twain's life that have fascinated me and inspired me over the years but i guess that would be sort of pointless so that's the update from us there's plenty of adventures coming and videos coming and some are halloween themed and some are travel themed and some are fall foliage themed um but no random land from mark twain's house yeah, I didn't want it to go to waste. So I've jumped back in with the sometimes vlog, something I used to do all the time. If you like seeing this, would you like to see more vloggy conversations like this? They're a little shaky, they're a little motion sicky. Between epic random land, 1000 shots and edited 4K videos, or nah, or would you like to see it maybe, but on another channel, it doesn't interrupt your feed. Give me a little feedback. Leave me a little comment down below about that. Let me know what you think. But there you have it. I do, by the way, do vlogs uh, actually on a, usually about five days a week uh, for the Adventurers Club, which is a Patreon tier. Uh, we have something called the Morning Announcements, which is about 15 minutes, uh, give or take, per day. Uh, sometimes we do a two-parter, we have 30 minutes a day. Uh, usually every weekday, and that's more of a sit with me and have morning coffee kind of thing, talk about plans and dreams and crazy situations that have gone wrong, like uh, we were involved in a hit and run here on the East Coast in a rental car that I don't have insurance for. So that's uh, a story that's coming on the morning announcements, things like that. So that does exist. If you've never seen Patreon, we do also have podcasts and different things there. And we have more stuff uh, coming in on the way in the future, more plans. There is, of course, the store.randomland.com. Come on, give me a break. You'll notice in my main videos, uh, you don't hear me five seconds into the video going, smash the like, please subscribe before you see this content. Check it on my Patreon, check out this and that. Because I don't want to hammer people with that. I want to make something, you know, watchable and great and uh, fun and adventure and all that kind of stuff. So here I am with you, just mano y mano, having a little convo. You got to forgive me for having a little plug because I don't do that very often. Um, but yes, we do have all those things. We do have the Patreon and the merchandise and the store still in the antique store in your circle. It's called the Antique Station. There's a little random land booth in there. So we got all kinds of stuff like that going on. 
Hello. Hi. <laughs> so anyway, that is what's going on now. We have uh, a few more days, just a couple more days, but today will be our first and only day on the trip with no filming a main video that takes eight to 10 hours of all day long to film. And so I'm gonna take Allie uh, to go get lunch, take her to a cute little New England coffee shop somewhere. I think we're gonna be heading, basically now turning the ship and heading back towards Boston uh, and the East Coast over there, uh, to, which is where we're gonna make our way home from at the end of the week. So basically um, the TLDR, the short version is, we got to Boston, we went up to Salem, we filmed all over Salem, Massachusetts, and we went up to New Hampshire and filmed some amazing stuff, that's sort of Halloween related. Then we went up into the White Mountains and into Vermont and filmed all kinds of gorgeous fall stuff. So we went from scary, uh, scary fall to cozy autumn. And then we have cruised down here to Connecticut, where as you can see, there's a little bit of fall color, but they haven't hit their peak down here yet. And we are turning the ship now uh, southwards and eastwards, kind of along the shore and towards Boston. I'm incredibly grateful to be at the Mark Twain house. I, I just, I didn't think I would make it here. I certainly didn't think I would make it here this year. We were gonna come on our honeymoon um, as part of a honeymoon that we did not have yet. Allie's medication cost $24,000 per injection. She's done with surgeries, she's healing well. well. She's done with surgeries, knock on wood. I'll knock on wood in a second. Um, but she still has very expensive injections, all that stuff. And so we're trying not to switch horses in the middle of the race. We don't want to switch up her doctors. We don't want to switch up her health insurance. And so that means in the state, for the state of California, as far as they're concerned right now, she has to stay a single woman. We've considered ourselves married basically the entire time since we were supposed to have our wedding and have been so committed to each other since even before uh, getting engaged and all that stuff. So we're not in a hurry like a, you know, we're not in like desperate hurry or anything like that. When the time is right, the universe will align and it will happen properly. And if we had gotten married and she had been on my health insurance, it would have been so much harder for her to, do, to go through all the surgeries, to get the medication that she needed and all that kind of stuff. And uh, if we switch now, it'll be hard for her to afford it. So a lot of people ask us about the wedding. When's the wedding? She had her surgery. She's better now. When's the wedding? We have no idea. So it's not that we get annoyed when people ask, but when people ask sometimes it does kind of make, it's just kind of, it's kind of a bummer. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that's kind of what's going on. A little update about it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bummer in one way. Like our friend uh, Tyler and Alex, they got engaged after us. They're getting married this month before us. And uh, so in some ways it's like, oh, we were going to have a wedding. And in other ways we're like, well, you know, that wedding would have been, even though it was going to be small, would have been pricey. And it's nice that we uh, didn't spend that money. And you know what? We have each other and that's all that really matters. And, uh, we still very much love each other. Uh, sorry to the haters. We still very much love each other. That girl picked me. She saw me on the internet. She picked me. She uh, basically met me and was like, you're going to date me and pursued me and pursued me until I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess we could maybe date a little bit. And uh, she's still around. She told me at one point when we were kind of seeing each other, we weren't really dating you. She's just like, you're never allowed to break up with me. And once I get married, I never get divorced. You know, I love Allie. She's so great. Um, and it's wonderful. Just on a personal note, um, a little behind the scenes note, it's been kind of incredible coming on this trip because she only had that surgery a couple months ago to, uh, to uh, put all her insides back together and stuff. And even after she had the first surgery that removed the blockage and all that kind of crazy stuff in January, um, she felt so much better. She was out of the woods. She wasn't in danger, but it was sort of depressing. And she had prednisone. She went through a lot of weird stuff with her body from the prednisone or from the medication and of course she had equipment all over her and a hole in her side for months and so she wasn't always in the best mood but she was better she was so much better she was so much herself again but after this last surgery it's been really crazy like the transformation is wild she is like bubbly she's dancing she's singing to her cookies again when she eats good food she's doing a little dance her energy is way back and that's another part of the reason why it was like all right, we're in a little dead. We're in, a, you know, we have a lot of work to do and stuff at home. We got a lot of ground to make up for for all the months and the last couple of years where I've slowed down so much because I needed to be home with her and take care of her. And so there's a lot to do, a lot to build, a lot of work to be done. And uh, before we headed into the winter and before things ramp all the way back up and stuff, it was nice to take this little trip, which, like I said, I, 
I uh, chiseled a lot of wood in my garage. I made a lot of signs and sold on eBay. Thank you to everyone who bought one of those uh, because that paid for, oh, a giant chunk of this. That's what we bought the tickets for. Didn't realize when we bought the plane tickets and made the plans that, you know, going up to the peak foliage in New England in the fall was going to get ridiculously expensive hotel-wise and all that kind of stuff, or the rental car prices these days, or having the rental car get hit uh, from behind by a crazed guy the other night. Um, the damage isn't too bad. I'm hoping they don't notice it when I return the rental car back in. One time I didn't get insurance. Always get the insurance, you guys. <sighs> I've seen enough sitcoms to know how it works. I should have known better. I should have known better. Statistically, it was bound to happen. And if it was gonna happen, it might as well have been a minor damage to the vehicle situation. We didn't get injured, so we're okay. But um, it was kind of a crazy situation. Anyway, that's a story for another time in another place. But we're on the East Coast and uh, we gotta head back West and we're on Allie's trip still. Now that I've seen the Mark Twain house, I'm gonna go into the museum gallery, go into the gift shop for a minute. And then we're going to switch focus back to Allie and her wonderful trip and take her to a diner and do a bunch of East Coasty type of things. Maybe we'll go get some clams and lobster. Who knows? So I'm going to go retrieve her from the car where she looks like she's taking a little bit of a nap and uh, get back to it. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for paying attention and listening and uh, being part of the journey always, both on Random Land and now here on the Sometimes Vlog, kind of kicking it old school today with you, walking around, having a good time. I will see you very shortly in the future. Again, let me know what you think about bringing little mini vlogs like this back between episodes in the future. Should it be on another channel? Should it be on this channel? Do you mind when something interrupts your feed? Do feeds not matter? There's Allie looking beautiful, hello. hello. Don't you feel better? I was talking about your surgeries. I was talking about how you have your mojo back, kind of. Look at her. She looks gorgeous. She's been dancing. She's been excited. Not today, though. A little tired, right? Yeah. You look a little sleepy. I look a little sleepy. We've both been kind of running on empty because we've covered a lot of miles. And I don't think we've slept even seven hours. Not even close. Any of these nights. So today is the day when I, shut, when I say goodbye to you guys and shut this down. We're going to go check out the museum. We'll go get you some lunch and then we're going to head down the coast. We're going to head towards Rhode Island and have a nice peaceful alley day. Get to a hotel early today and hotel and for once sleep well. So if I, and we'll get to sleep in tomorrow morning Oh because oh, we have a lot of video to edit. So I'll be editing video and letting her sleep in. So I will be sleeping in. I'll be working. Allie will be sleeping in. So we just wanted to say hello to Allie, but it's goodbye from us. You have done your duty. Don't forget about all those links and things I told you about, but uh, and the meetup this weekend. Otherwise, you can go home and sleep well.